What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Tuesday, April 9th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, Jamie Dimon calls to push stop to all oil and gas projects, quote, enormously naive in his quarterly or in, in his yearly investor letter. Great story. Next up, environmentalists suing to shut down power plant, providing 9% of California's power. We love a good California story. Next up, the odds of a hundred dollar oil are rising as supply shocks convulse the market. Next up, Exxon's expanded UK refinery to supply first diesel in early 2025. Global elites have no master plan to replace crude oil rather uh, other than lining their wallets. This is an interesting twist on a great one. I got to love the cover art on this one. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what's going on in the oil and gas markets. Oil price is fairly stagnant today at 86 bucks. Can't complain there. And then we did get an interesting note out of um, the FTC. Chesapeake and Southwestern merger delayed after uh, FTC seeks more information. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We will talk about all that and a bag of chips, guys. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to kick us off? Hey, let's start off with our buddy there, uh, Jamie Dimon. Uh, I'll tell you, he's a hoot. Absolutely a hoot. Dimon calls to stop uh, all oil and gas enormously naive. Michael, yesterday on Twitter, I have to say one of the funniest posts I've ever seen was this lady sitting on a Southwest fight with just stop oil. And somebody was asking her, when you land? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go on with this story. Our allied nations need secure and affordable energy resources, including critical nations like Japan, Korea. Most of European allies would like to depend on the United States for their energy. Um, we need to be able to deliver our energy and we're not doing it. But this whole move, when asked Monday about uh, Diamond's comments, White House uh, uh, Gian Pierre, whatever her name is, Pierre uh, said, is U.S. is producing record amounts of oil and gas where the nation invests in transitioning to sources of cleaner energy. You got to love it. Yeah, I mean, I think what Jamie Dimon is saying is is obvious if you look at the facts. I think it's unique in the fact that we haven't seen this, you know, most global elites, as we'll cover in the last segment. They want to switch from oil and gas off of um, – they want to switch to oil and gas to renewables. So very interesting. I uh, love to see Jamie Dylan, um quote, our allies – nations that need secure and affordable energy resources, including critical nations like Japan, Korea, most of our European allies, would like to be able to depend on the United States for energy, he said in his letter. I echo well, those sentiments. And I've been talking with George McMillan about this and that we, I would not want to do business with the current administration if I was another country. We are going to lose Japan right now. If they're already aligning and we can write this down now. They are aligning with, are you ready, China and Russia, oh. Japan. We're losing Japan. Which All is right, not good. Which is not good. No, this is terrible. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next one here. Environmentalists suing to shut down the power plant providing 9% of California's power. Diablo Canyon, I am sorry. You can't buy this kind of a Monday Eclipse Entertainment. Welcome to California. Holy smokes. The DOE awarded $1 billion to keep the plant open. I mean, Governor Newsom, grease monkey hair, actually says, wait a minute. We're going to keep this bad dog open. You try to run the country with 9% less electricity, yeah. it's going to be bad. Listen to this quote. As we experienced during the record heat wave last September, climate change driven extreme events are causing unprecedented str stress on our power grid. The Diablo Canyon power plant is important to support reliability. Holy smokes. That Governor Newsom said that. I don't like him. It's but I 
He said it. He's got it, but he's still got these people wanting to climb what it, a, change him out of it. Blind squirrel finds cheese once in a while. Uh, I yeah, I a, a grease monkey pulled the hair out of his uh, eyes. I guess I don't know. No. Diablo Let's Canyon get, has been fought from the beginning by this is the latest environmental group. Who knows if it'll? Who knows what will happen? Oh, it's you been know, applied. Luckily, we did see in January. The Biden administration did chip in a billion dollars to help extend the service life. So there's that there. It's it's a catch 22 with these environmentalist folks. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, my personal opinion is I think that the, those environmental group are funded by uh, very bad people to cause disruption. The, uh, yeah. Let's go to the next story. The odds of a hundred dollar oil are rising sh- uh, as supply shocks convulse through the market. Uh, this is pretty interesting. A recent move by Mexico to slash its crude exports is compounding a global squeeze. It's also because Mexico doesn't want to sell oil to the United States. <laughs> You know why? They don't like Biden. I'm I'm serious. I was even, uh even his own mother doesn't like him. Okay. I'm sure she does. Yeah. But no, I mean there's a lot of geopolitical pressure around what's going on with oil prices and you could be right you could be a mech this is the the mexico russian short squeeze to drive prices up to a hundred dollars and get biden out of there it's very interesting we have got to do this michael you and i and rt and david blackman and everybody else we've got to get there and we've got to reenact that one horrible spaghetti western when we're all looking at each other and the, we're in mexico we're russia we're looking like this and we're hearing that music playing around in the background who's gonna you know this is a mexican russian standoff (laughs) no kidding no kidding but no hey we just saw it on the ticker behind me guys oil's up to 86 bucks and that's very close to a hundred dollar oil mexico u.s could Qatar and Iraq cut their combined oil flows by more than a million barrels per day in they're putting the squeeze on bike they are. And you know what? David Blackman, uh, we love us some David Blackman, just put out on his uh, daily caller or a telegraph article. Uh, he put out there and said, guess what? He's marking it on the calendar. Biden is probably going to release more of the SPR because it's the only way he's going to try to get some prices down. And that one is a David Blackman. We put it on the calendar. And I guarantee you, he's going to try to rob it again. Yep. Crazy. What's Uh, next? Let's go to a better story here. Exxon's expanded UK refinery to supply first diesel in early 2025. Michael, this one is actually smart move by Exxon Mobil. ExxonMobil is expanding its UK site and will start delivering diesel from the expanded Folly refinery in early 2025. Uh, The diesel uh, producing unit could be reconfigured later to make jet fuel or sustainable aviation fuel from vegetable oils. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to borrow somebody's. um, Never mind. Uh, There's a lot of molecular magic we can do with this kit. I think that's great. But diesel is going to be around for a while. And the fact that this is a newer investment into downstream that can be do used in multiple different ways is the way it should be done. Yeah, I mean, this is what you should be doing in terms of an R&D fund. Exactly. You know, as an oil and as an integrated oil and gas company like Exxon, these are the type of investments you should be making, in my opinion, versus you know doing what Total Energy does, doing what Equinar does, going and buying and BP, going and buy on these wind farms. This is a much better type of investment as an integrated oil and gas company. So I applaud this, and the UK needs the diesel. So oh, yeah, and low low sulfur. I'm all in. I am all in for the low sulfur diesel. And uh, 40% could reduce imports into Britain. That is huge. Yeah. Uh, that is absolutely well done. Hats off to ExxonMobil. Yep. 
this right, let's one, go to this last one. Oh, the picture is absolutely horrific. I don't know who who can did we this. Get one. That Mr. Producer, can you there pull you this one up? Smokes. Here? Speaking of a eclipse today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, global elites have no master plan to replace crude oil other than lining their wallets. This is actually from Ron Stein, and I'm interviewing him next week on the 16th. And this is actually, he's a good friend of the show. The elephant in the room that no one wants to discuss is that crude oil is the foundation of our materialistic society. It is the basis of all products and all fuels demanded by the 8 billion on this this planet to only 1 billion existed less than 200 years ago. Wow. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, crude oil, this is something people forget, Michael. Crude oil is n- almost never used to generate electricity, but when manufactured into petrochemicals, it is used for vet- virtually everything else. Even Diablo Canyon, like we just talked about. Yep. You can't make, uh, you know, half of the stuff. You can't use the petrochemicals for your microphone, for your, uh, you know, your iPhone or any of the things that yep. you need. Yeah, you can have power, but you got to have oil to make your iPhone. No, you you absolutely need it. So crude oil products are essential. And I, 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 I'm all in for doing this. Without crude oil, there'd be nothing that needs electricity. What a line from Ronald. Everything that needs electricity to function, like iPhones, computers, data centers, x-ray machines, is made with petrochemicals. Got to hand it to him. And then, Miss Producer, if you could bring this up, life without oil is a a graphic that is amazing. Um, Yeah, you can have nuclear. You can have wind farms. But you ain't going to have medicine, cosmetics, and holy smokes. You know what? There'd be a lot less wrecks on the highway if we had no cosmetics. Women would not be putting makeup on in traffic. I think that that would be phenomenal. What do you think? Um, I'm more worried about the medicine, to be honest with you. I'm more worried about no medicine, but um, and absolutely unbelievable. We love Ronald Stein. We do. And uh, with that, uh, we're going to have another discussion with him next week on the 16th. So hats off to Ronald. It's off to you now, dude. Yeah, um, we'll we'll jump to finance, but first we'll we'll pay the bills here, guys. As always, check us out. World's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. We appreciate everybody who's reached out. Tell us um, that they love the website. We're gonna keep cranking here, guys. Um, Stu and the team, as always, again, do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and oil and gas business dashboard dot energy newsbeat.com for all your data energy news combo check the description below it's going to have all the links and the timestamps to the articles especially if you're on spotify we're working on it if you're on a itunes podcast listener but if you're on spotify um chapters work great um we also um are rolling out a lot of cool stuff guys so as always www.energynewsbeat.com in, in terms of all overall finance stuff too you know, we saw S and P 500 basically flat, only down about five tenths of a percentage point, to, um, um, or excuse me, 0.05 percentage points, um, which is basically flat. Same there for the Nasdaq, ten year yields, um, and two year yields are absolutely flat. Dollar index down about uh, 0.15 percentage points. Bitcoin up three percentage points, seventy one seven hundred right now. Crude oil down about a half a percentage point, eighty six ninety uh, eighty six forty three. With Brent oil ninety seventy four, mainly off the back of you know renewed push for uh, a, a ceasefire between Hamas and Israel. We, we uh, Israel began actually withdrawing and reducing its troop count in southern Gaza as fresh round of ceasefire talks did come up. So you know. That did drop oil price. I mean, it's it's kind of funny. Ceasefire talks lower oil prices. It's a it's a crazy world we live in, guys. Um, but I will take that. We're still trading above eighty six dollars. Um, there are also some signs um, of rising oil stocks. You gotta love this. Um, where's that? Um, you know, we also are again are seeing. Uh, where is this? Where is this? Well, again, that's why you don't trust Reuters, folks, because they're just throwing stuff into titles. But uh, um, I. Stocks are they're going to continue to rise. We saw a build in the petroleum reserve last week. It, it may or may not, yeah, yeah. 
whether it continues or not doesn't matter that we're still teetering on this interesting bend. And I think I tend to lean more we're going to see $100 oil than we're going to see $60 oil at this point, if only because I think the short squeeze is on from the stuff we covered about Mexico, what we've seen in Russia, what we've seen OPEC doing. They want to drive the price up to get Biden out of there. That's my prediction. I'm on the 100 side versus I am on the negative um or the sixty dollars oh, oil side. Say that again. They want the oil price higher to get Biden out of there. Yeah, I think what they want to do is they 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 they're they're using they're putting the short squeeze on Biden. They're dry. They're restricting all of this. Um, Me- why is Mexico coming out? Mexico doesn't like dealing with Biden. No, Trump or Putin doesn't like dealing with Biden. He'd rather deal with Trump. So why if you can if you can increase oil prices. Pull back on your production a little bit. Drive the price over to a hundred hundred dollars. Still make money and get your the guy you prefer in there. Wow! <laughs> wow! The short squeeze, baby. It's the short squeeze. Wow! He doesn't even know he's getting squeezed, does he? No. Um, the only other thing I found saw today, Stu, super interesting. Chesapeake Southwestern delay merger. Closing after XFTC wow. seeks more information. Interesting. So here we go, guys. Chesapeake Energy um, and Southwest Energy um, said today that they uh, um, they're going to be pushing back their merger to the second half after receiving U.S. regulators' second request for information. U.S. lawmakers have sought increased security. Um, by the FTC over these multi-billion dollar deals. You got to give, uh, as a reminder, guys, 50 Democrats in Congress urged the regulator to probe oil and gas company deals and expand current investigations in industry competition. Um, multiple requests on Exxon Pioneer have come up along with Chevron and Hess. Oxy Crown Rock also said that. Chesapeake and Chevron came out today and said they're going to review. This is super interesting, Stu. The FTC is going to scrutinize these more and more. All of these aggressive closing um, dates hmm. that are thrown out. We're we're dropping Cord Enter Plus, the 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 deal spotlight today. One of the things um, that me and John Farrell talk about is the aggressive closing nature of Cord Enter Plus. They claim they think it's gonna. This was done after wow. Chesapeake and Southwest Southwestern, and they thought it was gonna close before. Obviously, not gonna add up. I think this adds a lot of fuel to the fire. That says it's gonna be hard to get some of these deals closed. Wow. I. It's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. We haven't heard anything yet. Shares of both companies were down 1.2 percentage points for Chesapeake and 1.7 for Southwestern. That's on gas prices up um, 3.5% today to $1.81. Ooh, not good. When you get an increase of gas prices, you're a gas-heavy player, and you go down because the FTC is delaying your merger. Thanks, Biden. What else you got, Stu? Uh, no, I... I'm wondering uh, if we're going to have another eclipse tomorrow. That one was so much fun today. Just the memes alone were hilarious. Yeah, no, the memes were good in the eclipse. We <laughs> hope everybody enjoyed it yesterday. Um, as always, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and let you get out of here, though. Appreciate you checking us out. World's greatest podcast, energynewsbeat.com. For Stuart Turley and Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.